Welcome, friends, it is I, your old Scarf, and it's time for the newest patch, and there he is. Anubis looking pretty bad, eh, and Stargazer, Anubis very Stargate inspired for that one. Find it funny how we got the pyramids in the background when they took out Domination. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to do three sections here. We're going to do general changes, item changes, and god changes. Next week is going to be Geb, so can't wait for that. But until then, let's look at the patch. There he is, Stargazer Anubis, looking pretty bad, eh? Look at that. What's cool about him is all of his abilities are different uh, in look. Like, they're not different, but they look different, and they look really cool. It's really nice. It's, I'm sure it's worth the gems. I wish I had gems, but I'm sure it's worth it. Now, there's also Thor. Bam! Look at him. Graphically updated, and he's improved with the buffs, and I'll tell you them later. But there you go, there's Thor. Now let's go ahead and look at the gold skin and Anubis again. Here's Stargazer Anubis. Looking pretty cool there. Now there's Sun Wukong also who's gold now. There's something interesting about gold Sun Wukong though. And I want to see if you notice it first before I say it. Look at him. So here he is. Nice contrast on him. Good blending of colors there. Then we got the black one as well. Now then, my question is, do you notice something about the blue? I did. He has a different color blue than everyone else. Look at this. Okay, there's him. Now let's check out Kali with the gold skin. Who doesn't like looking at Kali? There you go. She's got a darker blue there. We can take out. You take a look at someone else. We got Thanatos over here. And he just load up. Come on, load up, little buddy. There we go. Different shade of blue. Everyone else has this shade of blue for the most part, from what I can tell. I don't see anyone who doesn't have that shade, that dark blue shade. But Sun Wukong gets a light blue shade, so. If we're going to change up the coloring on these guys with the shades, then it would be interesting to see different shades of blue for other gods. Because certain gods, I think they would do better with this shade than with the dark blue. So seeing that makes me think, hmm, might be interesting to see that different shade with other gods, basically. Now to curiosity, did they fix that Shibalanke bug or is it still there? I want to know. And the answer is... Yes, they did fix that bug. Or was it the black skin? Let me check the black skin. That was the blue skin, right? Yeah, it was the blue skin. They did fix the bug. There we go. And we see if Thor's affected at all uh, in how his skins look. Where is Thor? I'm blind in numbers, letters, letters, letter. There you go, Thor. Here's Thor. So here's Thor again. They did a really good job with the texturing there. He looks very defined. Then the other skins, I think, are also defined a little bit as well. To the best of my knowledge here. Yeah, there's some definition there going on there. I don't know if Blood Eagle's affected. I don't think Blood Eagle's affected at all. It might be, and I just can't tell because I don't play Thor that much. So we got Gold Thor. And then Black Gold Thor. There you go. Now for general stuff. So rotation this week is Amazon Cobb, Bacchus, Fenrir, Odin, and Poseidon. Also, oh, the camera change. Okay, uh, I'm not a fan of this. It'll be good for some people, but not for others. The, the camera is now locked behind you, and all you do is you move the targeter now. And for some people, they'll like that. For other people like me, I don't. I'm too used to the classical way right now to do that. So I'm fine looking at the sky. Because I have because I played for a year, I'm used to it. And I understand how to do ranges based on that. So I'm good with that. Now also, the towers and assault map have been updated with graphics. Uh, let's see, they've changed a bunch of UIs. You can tell a little color difference here and there. There's some other differences. I don't know what they are yet. I have to see them. Oh yeah, Conquest League now has four bands, two for each side, so you have to have 14 gods to play that mode now, and that's good, there's a big enough roster for it. All this everyone bans Guardians, and holy crap. Uh, Joust 1v1 is gone now. It's not here anymore, it's not in casual, because it's in League now. It has its own League mode. Now I can show you right now what it looks like about Leagues, there you go. So this is Joust things right here. And we'll see uh, who actually plays this mode, I don't care for it. But since there's a 1v1 crowd that's out there, We'll see how this goes, but we're going to see. It's going to be very samey. I already know it. If you want to rank up, there's only certain guys you'll play, and it's a very small number. Unless there's bands. If there's bands in Joust, okay. Oh, yeah. If you leave your base without buying an item, it will tell you that you forgot to buy items once. Also, if you put hit Caps Lock, it'll tell you that you have Caps Lock on as well. That's something to see there. 5v5 practice now you can do. You can fight bots in 5v5, and they've updated the bots to try to make them better, so that's good. And I really hope they're able to update the bots and make them effective. Because if they do, even though that's got, that's got to be hard to do because of how this game plays. If they can make the bots effective and worth fighting, we can get a, a lot of people into this game. Because certain people don't like fighting other human beings. They like fighting bots with friends. There's a huge crowd that likes doing that in League of Legends. There's a huge crowd that likes doing that in Dota 2. If we can get that crowd over here, that'd be great. 
So as they work on the AI on that, if they make it better, we will definitely get more people into this game. So that'll be nice. And maybe some of them will leak into just playing on normal, uh, playing as humans. Also about Arena is that you can no longer kill the towers. I am unhappy about that. I know a bunch of viewers are unhappy about that because it's fun killing those towers in Arena. Now they are immortal. You can't kill those towers and that sucks. Like killing them. I, I, I'm surprised they, they did that, but they did and darn it. You just got to go with that. There's a new colorblind mode now. They had someone colorblind make it, so it's definitely got to work if someone who's colorblind made the thing so that other colorblind people can play. So that's good there. Although there are different versions of colorblindness, so we'll see with that. They did a bunch of spectator updates. I don't really know much about spectator. Um, they did some tutorial updates. Oh, I didn't talk about the Titans, did I? There are now Titans in this game, not Minotaurs anymore. The Titans have been replaced with... I mean, pfft, the Minotaurs have been replaced with Titans. The, the Order Titan is two hot chicks, and the Chaos Titan is a hot armor thing. It's it's a, it's fire and armor, that's what it is. So it's like Fire Giant's cousin or something. So that's what you got now, and they're in Joust, Conquest, and Assault. There's no more Minotaur at all. VGS still says Minotaur for now until they can get the voice work to make it Titan. Let's see here, and I think that's all the generals. Oh, how could I forget? Domination is gone. There's no more Domination. Domination from now on will be in MOTD mode once in a while. That is very disappointing, but there it is right there. We will do a Farewell to Domination video in the future because you can't play it normally anymore. You can only play it as it comes up as an MOTD. So that sucks. It really does. Uh, Eras did talk about having a new Arena mode and Arena graphic updates. The graphic updates are next week, and it looks like they're not having the new Arena mode yet. And I'd really like to see what it'll be, and I'll show you what he said. Uh... They're thinking of having it that every once in a while a bigger and stronger minion comes up that if you escort to the other side is worth more tickets. That's an interesting idea there. And also having the fire giant randomly spawn on the map. Those are both interesting ideas and I'd like to see and try those out, but they're not here yet. So we'll see about that in the future. And I think that's all the general stuff. I'm sorry if I forget anything or missed anything. Let's get on over to items. Alright, now it's time to look at items and there's quite a few opinions about them. First up is Teleport. Now, Teleport's been nerfed. Holy crap. It's now 240, 180, and 120. And now there's Teleport to Gods, which takes four minutes to use. But you can go to another God, and there's no way to be interrupted. Uh, any damage interrupts the Teleport. Okay. Now, here's what's going on. Tencent told hi -Rez they want them to try it out. So hi -Rez says, fine, we'll try it out. So they've made Teleport to Gods. And this thing is not viable in any way. 1,100 to use it. You can only use it every four minutes. So it's... In Athena Ultimate, you can use every four minutes... And you can get hit out of it, and you don't do any damage with it, basically. So it's not very good. While as there's, of course, the better version, which is Shield of Teleportation, which will allow you to teleport to towers or wards. So that's way better, cheaper, and you can do it sooner. So this is the better version of this. This does not need to exist right now. But they're going to probably buff it, Eris said. And if they do, then I'm worried, because they can make this a little OP on accident. And I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that because being able to teleport to somebody is a lot... It, that could be very breaking. It really could. So we'll see how that goes. The general opinion from everyone I talked to though is they don't like this at all and it could be pretty bad if they do buff it. But right now it is pretty useless to use. While there's this going on over here, personally the way I feel about it, there's two things, the good way and the bad way about it. The bad I feel about it is this kills variety because... Teleport was a safety net, which allowed you to use different gods in the solo lane, and they had some safety because they can just go back to base, heal up, and come back out there. So it's a battle of fresh gods trying to kill each other, or they just make a boring match of just pushing each other back and forth. And I liked it that way just because of the fact you could have a good variety of gods there. With Shielded Teleport being pushed to 120, and these other ones being 180 and 240, it means we're only going to see sustained gods like we did back in the day. Where we're just going to see gods who can last a long time, or gods who can clear really well and be safe at the tower. We're not going to really see too many aggressive gods. Those who are able to be aggressive and succeed, good on them, but... We're just only going to see more sustained and clear heavy gods, which is unfortunate, but that's how it is. But, the thing about this is, it also makes things more strategic, also on that... If you hurt someone enough and you make them go back to base, they have to run back. They can't teleport over unless they still got this thing. And if they got it, if you hurt them enough, they still have two minutes before they can do it again. So there's a strategy to that of being able to push someone back so you can rotate sooner and longer because your opponent has to go back to base. 
and they have to make quite a bit of a walk. Teleport really helps with that, with not having to walk so much. It is a pretty big uh, item to have for anyone in the solo lane. And some people have also said that this is an indirect buff to Apollo because he'll be able to split push better without uh, less teleports getting in his way, which is true. So there you go with that. The next change is Sprint and Girdle. And why did I click that? There we go. Girdle over here. So what they did is they buffed, uh, they made it cheaper. It's 200, 400, 600. And they buffed the Girdle support in that it's 10 seconds instead of 5 seconds now. Uh, which I think is good for that. So the idea is you can get this sooner and you can use it sooner. And it, it lasts longer in the in the party version. And Sprint also got buffed in that it's cheaper now. Also that the duration has gone up to six seconds. So it was uh, it was three, four, five, now it's four, five, six. So there you go. So sprint's better and cheaper. And that's great for me. We know how I like to play in Arachne uh, style. I like to play with Girdle and Sprint. It is an amazing combination with her if you know what you're doing. And I don't think I haven't shown off how amazing it is lately, but it is pretty good, and I have to show it off at some point in the future. Just how good having Girdle and Sprint is. You can be a dominating force the first half of the game with these two items, and now that they're cheaper, I can actually afford to open with these two if I want, and have a really good open with all this power and all this speed. Being able to keep up with someone for six seconds with Girdle on you, I could possibly get a duo kill right at the start, depending on whether or not they got CC at level one or not. So that'll be very interesting to see how that goes, and I'm going to try that out. Shard has been removed, as you can tell right here. No more Shard. This was a staple item in Assault. Other modes, not so much. I'm sad to see it go, because I loved using Shard, but they've taken it out, and rest in peace, Shard. And one more change to items is, besides equipment, uh, Sentry Wards, you can now only have one of them at a time. That's it. Limit to one Sentry Ward. You can have three wards, but only one Sentry Ward. The reasoning behind this is because people were just spamming wards late game. They weren't being very strategic about it. So they've nerfed it so that you got to be more strategic with your sentry wards. And I understand that. And I agree with that. That is a good plan there to be more strategic with it. Because late game, there's just wards all over the damn map. And you just basically have vision. And there you go. That's it. And that really wasn't... It, it just gave an edge. But there wasn't, much, there wasn't much strategy to that besides the fact of people were smart enough to buy wards. And now let's look at the items. Now, after the patch notes uh, came out a little bit after, I had a big discussion about the items and, and god changes and everything. So, uh, there's some opinions here and there about different things. Now, Heartseeker got nerfed on its attack speed. It is now 4%, 6%, and 8%. It's no longer 10% at the end there. And that 2% is significant. Uh, is it enough to say I don't want to use Heartseeker anymore? I don't think it is. It just makes Heartseeker a little less effective. But I think those who use Heartseeker will still use it. It's just, I don't, I feel like this nerf was unnecessary. I really do. And I don't know anyone who thought it was necessary. Everyone was in consensus that it was not necessary. Now, Quinn's Blade no longer has lifesteal. Now, that is a very significant change there. And Quinn's Size. Both of them have no, long, no longer have lifesteal. And I feel like, uh, I like it because Quinn's Size is pretty damn good. A lot of people also liked it because it Quinn's size is good. It's a very good item to have bl blades if you do it a different way. But size is a very strong item to have. And by taking out the lifesteal, now you got to consider if you want to get this or when you want to get this item. Because lifesteal is important to have when you're a physical god. But the size are also pretty good. So now you got to take your choice. Do you want to get this first? Do you want to get something else first? I think it helps vary up your uh, your build order a little bit. So that's good there. But I feel like Blades should have kept the lifesteal, honestly, because Blades doesn't have what Quinn Size does. Quinn Size can be redonkulous as you're going to a fight. Blades is a good solid item, but I think lifesteal would give it a reason to be used above Quinn Size, maybe. Because right now, nobody uses Blades. Everyone uses the Size. That's what's going on right now. And I just think it's appropriate that they took out the lifesteal, because now you really have to consider it. Some people said they're not going to use it anymore because there's no more lifesteal. I think it's still worth using. You just got to think about when you want to use it. Now, here's the one that bugs the crap out of everybody. Yotan's Wrath got nerfed to its 5, 8, and 11 penetration instead of what used to be 5, 10, and 15. Now, people are making uh, jokes about how it's up to level 11 now, so that's there's that. And also how they're trolling the OCD people because it's 11. 11 penetration instead of 10 penetration. And uh, people are saying, this is what they're saying, they're saying... This was a good nerf because Yotan's Wrath on Bruisers was pretty OP. While as people who have OCD are saying, 
pretty make it 10. <laughs> and um, I'm fine with the nerf. Uh, if it, even if it was 10. Uh, it's still got penetration. It's got good physical power. It's got a really good cooldown on it. 150 mana. That's nice. That's It's still a good item. Losing 4 points of penetration. Uh, it adds up eventually. But I think it's still fine. Now Ethereal Staff has been buffed in a way. In that it is cheaper. And I think this is fine. So Ethereal Staff is now 2700. Instead of... Uh, 2850, which I think is good. It makes it cheaper, makes it better, makes it more worth getting. And it's just a good item to have, especially in concert with Warlock Sash, which I'll talk about now as well. Warlock Sash is now cheaper as well. They put it down by 100 gold uh, in the final level. Well, from the second and final level, they put it down by 100 gold. So there you go there. So 750, 100, 2650. So that's nice there. And so you can just get this one sooner and you can get the Ethereal Staff sooner. The reason why they put this one down is because stacks take so long to get anyway that just let people get it sooner so they can get those stacks sooner. So these two items are good in concert with each other because of the passive of health and the stacks on this. And they're both cheaper by a little bit, so it might make them more worth getting together. And I'll, I would definitely get that for a stack heavy god, like maybe Alquang or maybe even Poseidon because they're so good at clear. Back to physical, because Brawler's Beat Stick and Cudgel have been changed. And what happened to them is... Let's get over here. No. Brawler's Beat Stick and Cudgel. What happened to them is they're cheaper now, and they also give more HP. They give uh, 50 and then 100 HP. So they give... It used to be 100, now it's 150. It used to be 150, now it's 250 HP on both. And they're cheaper by 200 gold. That's pretty nice there. This will be a good opening item for the solo lane... If you're fighting against a, uh, a physical bruiser. So basically uh, this will be a good plan for a bruiser to open with. This or Mystical Markers will be the best choices I think you get. So yeah, this or Mystical Marker will be the best choices against a, uh, a physical god I think in the solo lane. So it'll be nice to see this actually get used. Because it is cheap so it makes it worth getting at the start I feel. Chronos Pendant. the hell is it? There, Chronos Pendant. There we go. They have now made it have... Uh, more magical power by 10 points, so it's 60 now, and it's cheaper by 90 gold. Uh, still not worth getting. This this is a newbie trap right here. The Kronos Pennant is a newbie trap. This is not worth getting at all. Uh, I couldn't find a single person in the discussion who was willing to get this item. I personally won't get it. I, it needs more, maybe magical power, or someone was saying give it just straight up mana. Might make it better, but right now it's, it's just a trap. It, you're better off, in my opinion getting this instead to just protect you from opponents it also gives you a crap ton of mana and it's it you just protect from physical gods look at that 70, 75 physical protection i feel that is superior to getting the chronos pendant that is way better than just getting a little bit more power i think frostbound hammer and frostbound pendant have been buffed and the way they're buffed is that they gave them more hp they gave them 75, 75 more HP at the final level. It used to be uh, 325, now it's 400. I don't really think this changes any opinions on the Frostbounds at all. Frostbound pen, uh, pen, uh, Amulet, I really feel, needs a little more slow on it because it is not viable at all, in my opinion. The only gods who really could use this thing are Bastet, but she's already got enough slows on her, and Guan Yu with his three, but he's already got enough we can do with it as well. Frostbound Amulet is just useless on gods with constant damage abilities. So they need to do something to make it better. They need to just make it stronger. And it does run the chance of making Guan Yu OP if you give it too much slow. So it's it's something balancing act they got to figure out. But really, it's just not worth getting. I do not find it worthy of getting at any point. Then there's Sovereignty. Now Sovereignty, the consensus from everyone I talked to, is that this is an unnecessary nerf. All they did was reduce its HP by 50. So now it's 100, 250, and 400. It used to be 150, 300, and 450. And yeah, I it's it's I don't I don't find it necessary at all. I, I this is a staple item people will get on their tanks, but I no I don't get it. I don't feel like that was necessary at all. So what the hell? Now here's the one that that bugs the crap out of me, and that is the Void Blade and Stone have both been nerfed. Void Blade now does five less physical power. That's it. Five less. Okay. Well, the Void Stone does ten less magical power. What the hell? That, that's more than my feelings. Uh, why? And that's really how I feel about... I talked about this in the discussion is... 
what is the idea behind all these nerfs across the and buffs across the board with all these items? And I'm like, there's not, it doesn't really feel like there's a method to this madness. And someone was saying, though, that what they're doing is they're making some guesses and trying to tweak things to find the, the right spot for things because release is going to come out in March. We're almost at release. So they're tweaking things around to see if they can find the right balance of things. And I get that idea, but it's just, it just feels a little sloppy just going across the board like this. And I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't like it personally. But okay, that's what they're doing, that's what they're doing. There's not really much I can do about that. Um, there's plenty of items I feel like should get buffed. There's items that just nobody gets, and they need to give them reason to get them. Or just, you know, just not even have them in it at all. Like the stack items. Like, there is absolutely no reason to ever get this one. There's no reason to get Devourer's Touch. There is absolutely no reason ever, ever to get the Warlock's Ring. The Warlock's Ring is 2650. You know what's better and cheaper? No, you know what's better and, and costs only 100 more? The Ethereal Staff. Uh, the Ethereal Staff. This one. This thing is better and only costs 50 more. This thing is superior to the ring. And you can have both of these if you want. So, yeah, not worth it. This is not worth it either. Mott's Tomb, no. These alternate st uh, stacking items are just not worth getting. And they need to buff those and make them more worth getting or just forget about those. And there's just, I don't think there's any OP items really to buy. Uh, size is probably the strongest item, I think. Everything else is just pretty good to have. But they should really buff certain items, like Pythagorean's Piece is very rare to see. Soul Eater is also very rare to see. Some people say Witchstone. I think Witchstone's fine where it is. But there's just certain items that could really use more play, and they're just, nobody gets them. They just need to either make them better or something, but they're just not worth getting. Alright, it's god time. Okay, so first one up is Ares. He was bugged on his shackles? He only got speed buff once on his shackles. I did not notice that at all, so he should be able to get a speed buff uh, three times if he gets all shackles on there. So, he should have 45% increase of movement speed now when he shackles people, so that's going to be crazy to see there. His no escape now, whenever you cast it, it goes on cooldown. It no longer goes on cooldown only if you land it. Now it goes on cooldown if you use it, so now you got to think about when you use it more. And they've also nerfed uh, the potential stun on it by 0.1 second per god hit. So now it's 0.2 seconds. So basically what they did is they took out a potential 0.5 extra seconds on there. So at maximum, you could have a 2.5 second stun with Ares. Now it is a 2 second stun at maximum potential there. Still a good amount of time there. I think that might be a good tweak there instead of just making a longer cooldown on him or something like that. Because people really hate that ultimate. And I think this will please people a little bit. Not a lot, but it's something to be done for it. And I think that's fine. Now, Artemis. Now, here's the one from discussion. Everyone was in consensus. They were against this idea. Nobody was a fan of this. Suppress the insolent has been nerfed. You do 20 points less damage and it costs 10 points more mana. Artemis, uh, Why? So she's been nerfed on damage, she's been nerfed even more that her stuff costs more mana. And this is, the reasoning they gave is because Artemis stomps really hard in low level play. Two things about this whole thing. One is Artemis has a really bad mana problem. She really uses up mana very quickly and she just, she's just screwed on mana. Just look at it, she can only cast two of these things and she's pretty much almost depleted on mana already. She can maybe use three by level five and she's screwed. And that, that's no good. She can barely do anything because of how little mana she's got and how much her stuff costs. So this really hurts Artemis in the higher level play because she just doesn't have much mana. But they nerfed because of low level play. And there's the other argument is, why are we basing balance around low level play? Not everyone's knowing what the hell they're doing at low level play. People are going to get crushed by a lot of things at low level play. This is not something we should be looking into. I think high level play is where you should be looking at competitive play mostly. Maybe the higher ranks of League you should look at as well. But never low level play. I went 45 and 6 with Kali at when I first played this game. You cannot base anything off low level play. I don't know. And this was a consensus across everyone I talked to. At the discussion is... Artemis has enough mana problems. Why did you do this? And you should not base your balance around low level play. Now, Chalk. Some people will be happy to know that he got nerfed, but they're not, they probably won't be happy about the, what the nerfs are. I think these nerfs are appropriate, but I still think they aren't enough, unfortunately. And that is, 
His one has a smaller radius and it is significantly smaller. It definitely is. It doesn't hit as wide as it used to and I think that's good. It makes it mean you have to aim that more and it does keep a, give people time to dodge it. And then his torrent now, you can be crippled to not be able to use the torrent uh, if you're going to dash over to your axe. Uh, which is fine with me. And then they added two seconds on the cooldown for Rain Dance. And his ultimate, it always triggers uh, regardless of whether you get interrupted. I don't even know how you get interrupted because Chalk is CC immune to and immune to damage. I don't even know how you get interrupted. I don't know why that's a thing. Chalk is immortal during his storm call. My real problems with Shock are his damage is fine. I don't think that needs to get nerfed. I like that they gave the radius less. That's good. So he has to aim it better and gives people a chance to really try to dodge that thing. Torrent, there's nothing really big there. Of course, it should be nerfed on the cripple. I mean, he shouldn't be able to move when he's crippled because of the teleport. On. That's fine. His healing, I still feel is too much by a little bit. I think it could use a little more. Also, of course, uh, just... The slow is not really is kind of negligible, so is the attack speed debuff. But it's really the healing, I think, is what you really need to nerf on him. Just because he could have his way with you pretty easily, just using his three. He's healing up, and he's just beating on people, maybe even two or three people, and then he can just walk away. I've done it, I've seen other people do it, and that's why I feel like it needs to get nerfed. His ultimate as well, I feel like you really have to take away at least the damage on that one. Not the damage uh, that he takes, but that he does, but damage immunity. He is the only god with damage immunity besides the gods that fly into the sky, but even then they can still be killed by poison and other uh, burning effects. Like, Chalk is the only one who's immortal during ultimate as far as I can tell. Kali loses HP when she's in ultimate. This is the only one where you can... You can not be killed. At all. And I feel like you gotta take away that damage immunity. Because you wanna at least give people a chance to kill him and not allow him to do that big silence attack. That big silence attack can be a, a winner for a team fight. It really can. And I feel like that would be a good balance there. So it really just reduces healing a little bit and make him not immune to damage. And I think I'd be fine with shock. Though I think these are pretty good steps and, and maybe I'm wrong about that. But the consensus was his healing really does need to be reduced. At least in the discussion I was in. Freya can now shoot into walls now with her ultimate. Which uh, some people don't really like the, the idea of how everyone can shoot into walls now. I think it's fine just because aiming and stuff. The one that's weird to me is Hebos, how he can do it into a wall. Now, his water spout's so small. Personally, I think it's a nerf to give him the ability to hit walls because if you miss your shot and shoot at the wall, at least you don't fire it so you can actually aim it correctly and hit the, hit the target. Now that you can mess, mess up the aim and hit the wall, it's actually worse for Hebo. So he's not going to land it because the, the target is so small, you can easily aim it away from the wall and get the shot anyway instead of aiming at the wall to get the shot. So, yeah, I feel like it's more of a nerf than a buff for a Hebo to, to be able to hit walls. Isis. Isis has two kind of things. One is she can dispel through a wall now. She can dispel and partially hit a wall with it. Which is fine. The radius on this is a little bit bigger, so I think that's a little more fine there. But her uh, funeral rites now, uh, a radius of 80 for witnessing to get the stacks up on that. And I think that's fine. Her passive is is nice. It's not really, it's hard to utilize though. So I think giving it a bigger radius is pretty good for her because you don't see it that utilized that much, especially because she loses it on death anyway. Kali got a very interesting buff here. Now, she can also shoot through walls as well. Now, the thing about this is, personally, I don't really care that you can shoot through walls with this. I already learned to shoot past or before a wall to get those hits in. Shooting at the wall, would uh, okay, whatever. All did is made aiming easier, I guess. And this doesn't really mean much, not really. The incense is where the big one is. Incense is her physical power buff now lasts for 8 seconds. The reasoning for this is because when you get into a fight and you do the incense, you only get like maybe a couple seconds to actually use it. So 8 seconds, so she can actually use it more. And I feel like uh, this is going to be really good. I, it might be too good. I don't know yet. I got to try it out. But 8 seconds with 50 physical power? Kali is going to melt the hell out of a lot of things with that. Kali has amazing attack speed. Give her the ability to hit you a couple times with that. Oh man, that's going to be really nice. I don't know if it's going to be breaking. It might not be, but it's going to be really sweet for Kali for sure. Now Mercury has a curious kind of nerf going on here. And that is the buildup uh, after firing his ultimate is 0.5 seconds. Before he dashes forward. And it also leaves a warning indicator for people where he's going. So the idea here is it gives people a 0.5 second chance 
to dodge his ultimate to see and see it coming. They're gonna nerf Mercury again in the future as well. This, for now, this is the only the nerf they've done so far, and I I, I like that idea because it should be very interesting to see uh, how people react to that ultimate's warning, and I like that. Now, the other side of it, of course, is he's Mercury should be able to just do things instantaneously as well. So I don't know, but I I do like that people have warnings so they can try to dodge it, and that that I think that's pretty cool there. Zeus, all right. Zeus is no longer slow immune when he does his Age of Shield, and also he lost five points of protection on it. My feeling is this is good because that slow immunity made him nearly impossible to kill, especially when he had Orange or Sprint. Then you could never kill him because of the speed he had and the fact you can't slow him down with anything. That armor is still pretty sweet, and I feel like he does need to have it just because of how fragile he can be. But the feeling is that he's not nerfed enough, and people feel like they should either take away his stun, which I don't agree with. I think giving him that utility is what makes him so strong right now, or his damage. I think, yeah, if you want to take something away, I think you should reduce his damage a little bit, because that stun is good utility for Zeus. You take away that utility on Zeus, and I think he'd be worthless again. I really do. I think the stun is really what helps him out, and also his ability to dodge well. His ultimate is, of course, effective, but that damage can be too much with all these stuns and everything, so I say the stun, the stun stay damage, I would rather they put down if they have to nerf something. But this is a good step here, making he does not have slow immunity anymore, because he is just so hard to catch. Now let's talk about all the gods with post-hit reduction. So the first one's Fenrir. Okay, there's it's Fenrir, Naya, Odin, Thor, and Vulcan. And I have mixed feelings about this. Now, Fenrir first up. Now, Fenrir, he, basically, after he does Seething Howl and Brutalize, it used to be 0.5 seconds before you could do your next action. Now it's 0.2 seconds. What that means is you can go ahead and Brutalize, and once you're out of it, get to Seething Howl pretty quickly, and you'll be able to hit a little bit sooner. Same thing goes for the other way around. You can get the Seething Howl hit, and then go into Brutalize really quick, if you only want to do that one hit. So, basically, it allows you to combo faster with Fenrir. Basically, all these allow you to combo faster. You've seen it with Alquang, how he can combo all his abilities way faster. He can hit you with his 1 and his 3 almost instantaneously, basically. And that's pretty nice for him, and we've seen how effective that's made Alquang. He can hit you with both those, and if you're slowed down, he hits you with his ultimate. And bam, that hurts like hell. The reduction to delay started with Alquang, and now we're seeing it with other gods. Now we're seeing it with Fenrir. I don't think it'll be breaking on Fenrir. I think it's just going to be fine for him. Naya, though... What they did is they did the same thing, 0.5 to 0 0.0, um, 0 0.5, so, ugh. 0.5 to 0.2 on the Universal Ring and on the Flaming Spear. So basically you get to attack sooner after, after you get to do something sooner after doing each of these. So you can throw your ring into armor, Armillary Sash and then do your ultimate pretty quickly. Or you can, if you don't have your ultimate, you go from your ring into Armillary Sash into Flaming Spear really quickly and do a bunch of damage there and there you go. Yeah, being able to do things quicker with Naya, I think is kind of okay. I think that might be alright for them, just because they're supposed to be so speed-based, and they could use that, because they they've been really falling off lately. And yeah, I think it's kind of alright, because you do aim these things already, and there you go. Odin's Gungnir's Might has been reduced from 0.9 to 0.5 seconds, and his Ring of Spears has been reduced from 1 second to 0.75 seconds. The idea here is... After he puts down the spears, he can he can get to hitting you sooner. Same thing goes for his or his might. After he spins, he can get to hitting you sooner. And yeah, he just gets to do things quicker, and this might be good for him as well, just because he can just do things quicker, basically. So he just lays it down and attacks you, and there you go. So Odin is a little bit faster, able to do things sooner, and that should be a nice little buff for him for sure. Now for the two gods who I don't know what I think about having the reduction. Thor first. The reduction on all three of these abilities, Mjolnir, Tectonic Rift, and Berserker Barrage, have been decreased from 0.5 to 0.2 seconds. Basically, what this means is you can do this combo quicker. Put down the Tectonic Rift, throw out the Mjolnir's attunement, hit them with both parts of it, and then teleport over and spin to win with the Berserker Barrage very quickly. You can do all of these things in the span of one second. Maybe 1.5 seconds because of how long the Mjolnir's got to fly out there. So, you can do this in about... One to two seconds, you can do all three of these items, all three of these abilities on your opponent. And that could be a little ridiculous to see that. And this definitely is a buff to Thor. Do I like it? I don't know. The ability to do that combo. That combo, people had the ability to dodge it right after the rift. Which is unfortunate and fortunate at the same time. It's because you, you have the ability to just get out of it. Because the idea is, 
you had to be hit with the, the longer level of the Teutonic Fissure, a Teutonic Rift, to be able to get them with the full combo of this thing. But now you can pretty much probably do it instantaneously. And I don't know how I feel about that. I think it might be good, might be bad, I don't know. Vulcan's the one where it's bad. Because they put up the scaling on his backfire. Not the scaling, they put up the contribution. It's now 80% contribution on backfire. And 70% contribution on Magma Bomb. And all these things have delays redu reduced. So po from 0.5 to 0.25 on Backfire. 0.5 to 0.4 for the cannon. Now that's pre-delay pre is 0.4 to 0.5 to 0.4. Post-delay is 0.25 to 0.1. Magma Bomb from 0.4 to 0.2. You can also target into walls now. And Earthshaker... 0.7 to 0.2. So basically, look at these numbers. You can do all four of his abilities in one second. Think about that. Vulcan has the fastest burst in the game now. Look at all the damage he's got that he can do in one second. Wow, at that. Inferno back for a Magma Bomb Earthshaker. You can do all these in one quick motion. And I do not like that. The ability to spam so hard and so fast, it really worries me there. That's my final thought on the gods is, uh, I don't know how I really feel about the reduction. I feel like for certain gods, it'll help them out because they need a buff in some way, but maybe numbers aren't the way to do it, given that the reduction might work for, out for it. But other gods, if you make them spammy like this, it really worries me. Alquang being so spammy is very interesting. It makes them really deadly more effective, but it also... Uh, it feels less skill-based in, in strategy in that you just have to land everything quickly. That's that's it. It's it's skill-based in how quickly you can do things in your twitch and reaction time, but it's less skill-based in strategy of where to land your things. That's what worries me a little bit. You don't have to think about where you're going to land your stuff besides the first shot with Alcorn. You All you got to do is make sure you land the one, and then the three will follow, and then the ultimate will follow after that. For Vulcan, all you got to do is put them in range of that tower, and then the rest will follow. Hit them with the tower, hit them with the backfire, throw the magma bomb to keep them in range, and then earth shake them to death. And I worry about that happening with other mages. I worry about that happening with Poseidon. He already has a good combo with a 3-1 combo. If he could do them instantaneous, I don't know how I'd feel about that. It's, it's, he already has that with the with the crack, and he goes 3-4 combo already, or 3-1 combo. If he can go 3-4-1 combo instantaneously, that would really be bad, I think. Same thing goes for just other mages. I don't know. How I feel about it, I feel like it has less strategy because there's less chance to dodge, there's less chance to think about your movements. You just do it instantaneous and there you go. And so right now, it worries me, but at the moment, the only one I think it's bad to have it on is Vulcan. Everyone else, it benefits them not too, not breakingly, but it just benefits them well without giving them more power stats of any kind. So that's really what I think about that. Final thoughts overall about the patch. I like it in some ways, I'm worried about it in other ways. Mostly, I like all the art direction they've gone in. There's a lot of really good art going on. Uh, uh, some of the tweaks, I really am questioning. I don't get it. Some of the tweaks are fine, though. And I guess we'll see how the next patch is next week with Geb, who's going to come out next week. And there will be that. Now, we're going to try to do another stream like we did yesterday. And I think we're going to try to do this stream right after Bart finishes his patch notes. So we can talk about it. So we can discuss the patch notes, how we feel about it. So I can have a better way of talking about the patch notes in the future. I think it does make the patch notes longer, but it does make them more informative and more interesting. And also, saying the different sides of the of opinions on these things will help us all get a better understanding of how the community feels about the patch notes. So there you go. That is the patch notes. I had fun saying all this. Hope you had fun listening and watching. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? Having fun. Thanks for coming by and see you next time.